So Pretty Kitty, this is my vlog where I talk about all the things I love about sewing and crafting and generally being creative. Today's video is all about what I made in January, so if you're interested in finding out, stick around. So, let's talk about the first obvious change. I've had an experiment with a box of hair dye this morning and um, I'm quite pleased with the results. I'm feeling a little bit well, I won't tell you, my daughter said I look like a middle-aged Ariel, so I was like, I'm not sure that was the look I was going for. But I've been feeling really down with just not being able to go out, not being able to wear nice clothes. There's nowhere to go, and you kind of get stuck in a bit of a rut and start wearing pyjama bottoms and not bothering doing your makeup and just generally feeling a bit slobby. So I had this overwhelming urge to just change something and I thought, right, I'm gonna dye my hair. I used to have bright red hair in a bob when I was about 18 years old. So it was a bit of a risk. I was thinking, am I too old to get away with this? But I'm quite pleased. I put a couple of um, curls in it using a straightening iron. And uh, yeah, it's a semi-permanent, so you know, it's gonna wash out. Uh, I might get it dyed permanently this colour, I'm rather liking it, kind of feeling a little bit, hmm, yeah, glamorous today, so um, that's the first thing that's obvious that you're going to notice straight away. Okay, so let's talk about what have I been making. I have been sewing mainly presents this month. Um, I've got a niece and a nephew, you guys already know when uh, you've watched before, I've talked a lot about them both. Um, lockdown's been really difficult not being able to see them and get to know them properly. So I've really enjoyed making them gifts and both of their first birthdays just came up. I've got another nephew whose birthday is this Thursday and he is going to be four. Is he gonna be four? Oh my God. Yeah, so I've made him um, a little present. And yeah, so let's get stuck in with the first thing. So the first thing I've made, I took inspiration from Pinterest. I do a lot of the time spend um, evenings just looking through, scrolling at ideas, things to sew for children. And I came across this really cool Lego tote bag idea. So um, there isn't a pattern for this. I kind of made it up as I went along, but I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Um, What's, well, so what I've done here is I've measured a Lego board. Generally speaking, they are 10 inch square, the classic boards. So I wanted it to fit exactly into the little pocket inside. And so um, I used that as my starting measurement. The other side, I wanted a little bit of a storage bag to put uh, the bricks in. Um, the idea being really so that when we are allowed to go out for dinner again and socialize and stuff, um, his mum can take this in his busy bag that I made him for Christmas and he can um, play Lego wherever on the move. So that's the whole idea. The bag itself is detachable. So I just put a couple of strips of Velcro on there and um, I used uh, some brand new zips, which I'm going to show you later on and made sort of like a, I don't know what you call that. It's like a welt pocket, but with a zip. So um yeah, it just involved a little bit of measuring and drawing on just to make sure I cut the hole the right size. You lay overlay another piece of fabric on top and then sew uh, a box shape and cut down the middle and then sort of fold that fabric back through on itself so you get a nice um, finished edge on the edge of the zip there. So yeah, he can fill the bag up with bits of Lego and stick it back on into his carry case and carry it around. I used my Cricut machine to make the decal and put the words on uh, just to make it a little bit more interesting and this is just a bit of bias binding on the top there but it was a really satisfying little make. It probably took me about an hour and a half maybe um, sort of drawing it out and planning it first but I'm hoping he's really going to love that and I've got him a couple of boxes of Lego, classic Lego, to go with it for his birthday. So yeah, hope he's gonna love that. So that was my first thing I made in January. So, make number two is for my niece. I love making kids clothes. I just can't do it anymore for my own children, not cute things like this anyway. 
This is the Fox, the Bear and the Bunny. And if you've watched me before, you'll know that this is an absolute favourite book of mine for making small children's clothes. Unfortunately, my uh, youngest is seven now and he will not entertain the prospect of dressing up like an animal anymore, which is so sad. But at least I've got a niece and nephew who uh, will oblige. So what I've done is I have made the little brown bear sweater from this book. Now you can see this sweatshirt is uh, just a classic sweatshirt shape. It's got quite a tight bottom band, which means it gathers in quite a lot here and long cuffs. And um, this is actually in the picture made out of a velour type fabric to make it, the little chap look like a bear. Uh, but I, what I tend to do when I make this pattern is just make the uh, bottom band just slightly longer. I don't want it to cinch the fabric in quite so much as that. It's a little bit more of an 80s sort of vibe that. So um, I, that's the only modification I've made to the pattern. I've sewn this oh so many times before it's such an easy and straightforward sweatshirt for a small person and I made it for uh, 12 months to 18 months I think because she's turning one and I wanted her to have a bit of growing room so um, I long long ago back in the mists of time I made a sweatshirt out of this grey um, sweatshirting that had no stretch in it and it had a massive funnel neck so I don't know if you guys will remember I tried it on after I'd made it and it was a bit like being born again it was really really tight there was no stretch in the neck at all and um, it just was a total fail and that sweatshirt went back in my sewing cupboard because the fabric itself was absolutely fine it was just not suitable for the project I'd chosen for it so I grabbed that out of my cupboard and thought I'll just cut that up, reuse the fabric and make a little sweatshirt for, for my niece and here it is. So um, you can see here the bottom band is quite a bit looser because I just cut it longer so it doesn't cinch it in quite so much. Um, the cuffs are quite long but you can fold them up on themselves and make them um, half as wide if you if if they're if the sleeves are a little bit long so I'm hoping if it is a little bit on the large side that um, she'll be able to do that um, I've obviously put a neck band in I actually thinking about it I did modify this slightly so I took a centimeter off the neck um, depth because I was worried about it going over her head small children have got quite big heads compared to the rest of their body and I didn't want it to have the same problem for her as it had for me. Uh, obviously, this is a different neck altogether because it's got the ribbing in it. But it is still, because there's no stretch in the fabric, it's still quite a tight neck. So I did make that bigger just to make sure. And then the last thing I did was to put a um, vinyl decal on the front of this jumper using my Cricut Maker. So it says this girl can, and that is very, very apt because this girl can, she's gonna change the world. She can do anything. Um, and um, I just loved the combination of white and pink and gray uh, with the two shades of gray. I just thought that was really, really cute. So that's her sweatshirt. I'm on the lookout for some labels that say, um, your auntie made it or something similar along those lines. So if you've got any ideas of anywhere that sells labels that specifically say auntie made this or something similar, could you pop it in the comments below? Because I would love to put some little personalised labels in the clothes I make her. So that's her sweatshirt. I then used a pattern called the Petite Pegs by Patterns for Pirates. I think that's what they're called. Um, I'll pop a picture in of that pattern here because I haven't got it with me. Um, <clears throat> it's a free PDF pattern that you can just download and print out at home. And it is honestly the quickest, easiest, nicest uh, baby legging pattern I've made. Um, it, I've made so many pairs of these in the past. So um, I've just sized up this time. We've gone for a 12 to 18 month size. And um, I've used some fabrics that I had in my stash that were left over. It's perfect for using up small bits of fabric. So the first pair have um, foxes, squirrels, kind of an autumnal vibe to them. Um, they're quite big. They've got this yoga waistband. So there's no elastic in here. And I'm hoping that they will stay up 
okay but if they don't I can always pop a bit of elastic in them the last pairs I made didn't have elastic in and um, babies um, you know have nappies on so they tend to be a bit bigger around that area anyway so that was the first pair the second pair I made using this really cool mint green and panda print and this I originally bought for my daughter who had a pair of leggings out of it so she's really um, happy that she's going to twin with her cousin and um, yeah I don't know there's not a lot more to say they're really simple construction the leg pieces come as one you fold them in half sew down the inseam do the same with the second leg and then as with normal legging construction you turn one inside out and put that leg inside the other one sew the crotch seam up and then it's just a case of putting on the, the waistband and the cuff so the pattern itself doesn't come with a cuff I don't think um, I just drafted my own cuff to go on the bottom because otherwise it's, you have to faff around hemming the bottom and yeah, I think it looks cool with the cuff on so I drafted that myself, the waistband's part of the pattern though. And then the last pair I made I dug out some really soft, I mean this is really really soft, you can't see probably very well on the screen but um, it's almost like a sweater knit but it's quite a lightweight sweater knit. And um, I think I made myself a toaster sweater out of this some time ago and I'd kind of forgotten I had it. And um, I just thought with the greys, it would go really nicely with the sweatshirt. So this goes really lovely with that. And she could, you know, wear it as a pajama set or um, out and about. And it goes really nicely with the pandas, I think that picks up the pink in the decal really nicely. Doesn't go quite so well with this one. I'm not sure if that's quite such a good match, but still. A few lovely bits of clothing for my gorgeous little niece. And the last thing I've made in January is a birder pattern. This is a birder kids pattern, it's 9482. I've used this pattern quite a lot of times. I generally speaking make view B. Uh, it's a long tunic length um, sweatshirt. I'll show you the line drawings here. So you have got the option of this really high neck or a hood. Um, the neck has got toggles and a, a drawstring through it. You can put patch pockets on. This is more sort of a hoodie style and then you've got a couple of um, one legging style tracksuit bottom and one that's more sort of a classic cuffed tracksuit. Um, this pattern goes up to, um, goes from a size four to a 14 in um, ages, uh, but I always check the body measurements first because my kids are like skinny string beans. So quite often I have to size down. Um, I think I made um, an age nine for my daughter and she is nine and this is quite an oversized sweatshirt um, but I, like I say I've made this pattern numerous times and it's a really good one. Um, I had some this fabric from Franklin's that I bought ages ago. You know when you go into a fabric shop and you touch something and it's just so soft but you have no idea what you're going to make with it and I just thought I've got to have a metre of that, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It's been in my stash ever since waiting for the right thing and um, it turned out that it was perfect for this pattern. So here it is. So this is kind of like a sweater dress I guess you'd call it. Um, my daughter tends to wear it either with a pair of black leggings underneath or thick grey tights it's so soft, really, really soft. It's, um, it's a fleece, but it's almost like a minky and it's got all these really cute uh, flamingos all over it and this really gorgeous sort of teal greeny colour. Um, it doesn't have cuffs, it just is turned up on the, on the sleeve and hemmed and I popped a neck band in. I think if I was going to make this Again, I would uh, probably just shorten the neckband ever so slightly because it does tend to stick up. Um, but I think that's more to do with the fact that the ribbing's got quite a lot of stretch in it. And um, yeah, normally I go for about 80% of the circumference of the neck hole in order to get it really, really flat. But my middle daughter absolutely loves this and she wanted something super snuggly. And I have to say, I'm kind of a bit jealous. I almost want to make myself one now. I haven't got enough fabric left though. 
but I do have enough fabric left for a certain little person who uh, might get another jumper at some point in the future. So that was my makes for this month. Um, and as you know, I normally do quite a lot of um, dressmaking and not really been into dressmaking just lately, purely because I wear a uniform to work. I'm not going anywhere to wear any clothes. I don't really need any more clothes. And um, as much as I love dressmaking, I'm not in a position to be able to afford to buy tons and tons of fabric just for the fun of practicing. So um, I, I, I'm starting to feel more and more like I will, you know, once lo lockdown is lifted, I think I probably will start to look at my um, spring and summer wardrobe and maybe go for a few more clothes. I have put my Minerva makes up on their brand new website so if you do want to go and have a look at that I'll put the link down in the drop down box below um, but for the rest of the video I thought I'd just do something that other bloggers tend to do and just talk about my favourites. So favourite number one actually came from another sewing blogger that I watch regularly Lisa she had made some really cute sort of tray box pouches I will put the link to her uh, vlog down below um, and she had ordered some zips um, from Amazon and they are just the nicest zips. So these are one of my favourites. They've got this really lovely metal ring pull on them. And I just love the fact that the, the zip is a different colour to the teeth. I think that is so lovely. So it comes with, uh, how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten probably about 12 and they're all different colours. I'll just try and show you some more of the colours here. So there's like a green and yellow, red and white, brown and pink. You might have noticed I used one of them on that Lego tote that I just made because I just think they're so lovely and easy for children to use because you can put your finger through the, the ring pull, ring pull, zip pull. Yeah, so here's some more here. So yeah, that was one of this month's favourite purchases for sewing. I'm looking forward to making lots more zipper pouches using these really cool zips. So link down below if you're interested in buying some. So my second favourite this month is a book. So um, I tend not to do much reading. I find I, I fall asleep really, really easily if I start reading. I do listen to audiobooks occasionally, but um, this is a sewing related book and um, I think you'll like this. So this book is called Stylish Wraps and um, it's available on Amazon. I think that's where my husband bought it from. It's by Yoshiko Tsukori. Probably not pronounced that properly, so please correct me if I'm wrong. But I just loved the front cover of this book. That cape sold this whole book to me. And obviously, you know, when you're buying a book online, you can't see inside very often. But I could see the back pages. And I did think, actually, there's a few things there that I might make as well. I have to say, it's not all my cup of tea. Some of these patterns are a bit too sort of house on the prairie, kind of um, casual not really my sort of thing but there are some really really cool makes in here so the first one that I thought that I would definitely want to have a go at is this one here sort of a boxy um, straight cut uh, top with a little notch at the neck and um, it's made from a single piece of fabric so um, I quite like that I'm not so keen on this version with the big fluttery bits on the sleeves not really my style but um, same sort of principle um, there's also uh, a hooded stole, which would be kind of cool for the winter months. I like that one. This I thought was interesting. You could definitely do something with this, depending on your fabric choice. It could make it more dressed up or dressed down or slightly with a different colour. That would bring that, to make it sort of more my style. And then uh, there's a sleeveless version of that one there. What else is in here that you might like? So there's the cape from the front cover. Not keen on this, to be honest. This whole look is just not really me, so that's not something I'd particularly want to make. There is a nice cape here. That's uh, That would be quite, quite lovely in some black or dark grey. 
And then going through the book, you have also got these bits and pieces. Very much reminds me of sort of that peasant style that's been on the high street. I like these two pieces. I can definitely see myself wearing sort of a wrap cardigan like this. And this is a very simple style sort of coat. They call it a robe coat. Um, it says to construct out of heavier weight wool. Um, it's relatively easy to make. I don't think it's lined or anything, but I don't think it'd be too hard to just to line that and bag it out. And yeah, definitely like this one. I can see myself making that, maybe not in a linen, but in some other fabric. These ones, not really the sort of thing I'm into, but kind of reminds me a bit of the my sort of dress. And then you've got these sorts of things, which I'm not into making that. So there's a couple of really decent patterns in there. So I'm looking forward to giving that book a little bit of a try. But like I said, it was this pattern on the front cover that really sold this book to me. So I'll report back once I make these to let you know um, how the drafting is and stuff on these patterns. And then the last thing I thought I would talk about is something I've been watching on the TV. I just started it a couple of nights ago. Um, like everybody else, I've done Bridgerton and those, um, but I, I, which I absolutely loved Bridgerton, don't get me wrong. Um, I thought I'd give the Queen's Gambit a go. People have talked to me about it. I was like, not really sure, not really into chess. It doesn't sound that great, but it is really good. Honestly, it's so good. It's a great story um, about a young girl who becomes the most fantastic um, chess master. And although it kind of, the premise sounds like it might be a bit of a weird watch, it's actually a really good story. So I would definitely recommend catching that on Netflix if you haven't seen that already. So that's my makes and favourites for the month of January. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give me a like and subscribe. That would really mean so much to me. And I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.